So here it is, we're finally taking a look at my editing hub, what I used to make it, how I made it, and why I made it. And the reason why I made this was a problem that I had. I wanted a quick way to import multiple cards fast, and then a hard drive setup that allowed for really fast editing of current projects. So essentially I just wanted a box that I could use that would be really fast to edit on, and I could quickly import footage. Originally I already had a product in mind, and I went ahead and purchased it, and that was the Lexar Professional Workflow. We're talking 200 plus dollars to get into that game, and that only gave you three card readers, maybe a hard drive. So I thought there's gotta be a better solution out there, really couldn't find anything, so I just decided to make something. To take a closer look and a quick overview of the actual unit, let's hop over to the bench and get started. So here's the actual unit, and essentially what this is, it's, it's a box that has three SD card slots, and then it also has two hard drives internally set up in a RAID 0. So you're getting twice the speed, so it's a really, really great way to do editing. And it's all done with one USB 3 cord and a power cord. So this is the Editor's Hub Mark 1, if you will. So on the front here, uh, we have a power button. It has a nice LED ring that powers on the entire unit and all the internals. And then there are three SD card slots here. So you can just stick the cards in there. There's three card readers on the other side of this unit. Um, so that's the front. Nothing special on the sides. Let's look at the bottom. And here you'll actually see the active um, air system. So the way it works is uh, I have feet for this guy and then the air comes in through the bottom. So it's, it's elevated off the table. And then the air exit out through the fan in the back, which we'll look at in a second. So they don't need to look pretty, just lots of air you know, so there's enough um, flow to suck through and cool all the devices. Nothing on the top. I just used wood screws and painted them black for this whole thing instead of sealing it in completely because I wanted to potentially upgrade it and uh, make changes if I needed to. Now let's look at the back of the unit. Um, two holes. I was going to have two fans, two 12 volt fans. These are smaller fans. I can't remember the exact size. Probably says right there, but whatever. Um, the second fan wasn't working and these parts I just pulled out of, you know, crappy old enclosure. So the one was dead. So I only have one fan. Uh, normally when I'm using this, I have tape over this second hole. Otherwise the air would just enter and exit immediately without going through the unit. So if you're going to do this, I would do a larger fan or two little fans. Depends on what you're all you're going to pack into this guy. Right now the one fan seems to be doing a good job. Um, so yeah, so I cover that up. Air comes through the bottom cools all the units and hard drives and whatnot, and then exit through this hole. Down here is where I have cable management. It's really cheap on Amazon. Keeps the cords nice and tidy. And it's actually designed to drill a hole in your desk and have cords coming up through that. So I just uh, glued that in. And that's pretty much the unit. So now I'm going to walk you through how I made this and what parts I used. First and foremost is to find a USB 3 hub I bought one for around 30 bucks. I'll have links to everything we're talking about in the description so you can find links to the stuff that I purchased. And uh, the reason I bought this one was it came with a power cord. And this is really important because we're going to be using hard drives in this enclosure. We need power and more power than is provided on the actual USB 3 cable. And then we need card readers. I bought really cheap little ones that you stick on the side of your computer for around seven bucks each. So that's $21 total. I'll talk about why I think you should use different card readers when we get toward the end of the video. If you're going to make the hub like I did, you're gonna need two hard drives. These didn't cost me anything because I already had them. I actually pulled them out of really old USB 2 drives. So these are 2.5 inch hard drives they take up less power and obviously they're smaller the next thing you're going to need is some way to connect your hard drives to that usb3 hub i got these great little sata to usb3 adapters for 10 bucks each so two of them cost me 20 bucks next you're going to need a fan i actually took this from an old hard drive enclosure so i didn't have to spend any money on that and it's just a small 12 volt and make sure it is 12 volts because this whole system is going to run off of 12 volts so if you have a 12 volt fan, it'll make life a lot easier when we get to wiring this thing up. Next is a cord cover. You can do this any way you want. I wanted something a little cleaner and I uh, didn't want big you know, wood holes in the back. So this thing made it really easy for two cords to exit the device. So that cost me around five bucks on Amazon. And then next up is a power button. You can really go with anything here. You can go with an old school metal toggle switch 
a rocker switch. I used an LED latching button, which is a little more expensive and a little harder to wire, but uh, no matter what switch you're gonna go with, it's not gonna cost you or shouldn't cost you more than $10. Mine was around five bucks. Next are the fiber optic rods to reroute the actual LED lights without having to wire in new LEDs. And that cost me $10 for a bag of 50. And then we're gonna need a material to create the actual box. I use cheap poplar wood at Lowe's. You can really go with anything. So total cost for my project was around $112. Now we're going to talk about making the editing hub mark one first thing i did was take off the enclosure that was wrapped around the actual usb hub it's kind of risky um, but i wanted the extra space and i wanted really good access to those led lights so i could reroute them i ended up using a wire cutter to cut part of it because i needed something really strong and then a leatherman knife as well as a pair of pliers the back popped off and then i was able to just remove the actual top of the hub. Next, I took my little USB 3 card readers and I drilled a small hole right where the LED is so I could stick that fiber optic uh, rod through and then reroute the light. To figure out where to drill, I just plugged it into the hub and uh, once it lit up with a card in it, I took a screw and then marked where I wanted to drill the hole and then carefully, very carefully drilled the hole. And I didn't use a lot of pressure here. I just used the hand that was holding the actual card reader to control uh, you know, how much I was drilling through. So you wanna be careful you don't punch through and damage the actual card reader. The next thing I did was plug everything in. So I took my adapters, added them to the hard drives, and then plugged both hard drives in and my card readers and plugged everything in, powered it up, and made sure everything was working well. I think this is a very important step before you go much further. Now, I didn't do a very good job filming the next several steps because I really got into the project and it was very difficult figuring out how to attach all this and fit it all together. So I'm just gonna show you some photos as I went through the actual process. Once I knew everything was working, I went ahead and uh, glued on the actual fiber optic rods in the holes and on any other LEDs I wanted to use. So you can see here, that little bit of glue. I'll put a link to the glue that I use. It's actually a non-conductive glue that you can use to like glue PCB boards together. So it worked fairly well. Once I added that, I was able to drill holes through the face of the hub and then um, send those fiber optic lines through there so I could see the lights. When it comes to actually mounting all this together, I ended up just drilling a big two and a half inch hole in the front of the unit rather than trying to route a perfect hole since I don't have any jigs. And then I use a really thin piece of wood that you can purchase, you know, pre-cut to have the card slots. So the card slots, I use chisels and just very carefully cut those out. If you have a Dremel and are really good with one of those, you could probably make that a little easier on yourself. Then I had to figure out how to mount this. So in this photo, you can see I took the hub that I had the enclosure ripped off and I screwed it directly to the inside wall of the hub. And then I just plugged the SD card slots directly into it and I didn't glue anything down permanently. So um, I just stuck the cards through, positioned everything, screwed it all down. And then you'll notice that little um, L bracket, that's to keep the cards from pushing back into the enclosure when I stick a card in. At the bottom, you can see I already have the switch in place and um, they just screw on. And I needed to route out a little bit of wood so that I could actually get that little nut on there. With the USB hub and the card readers all in place and ready to rock with the fiber optics, I went ahead and started adding the hard drives. So I actually had some leftover little hard drive screws from the enclosure that I took these drives out of. So I used those and screwed them onto another thin piece of wood and then screwed that piece of wood to the sidewall. So here you can see the hard drives added. You can see the adapters on top and then I found the shortest uh, cords and the most flexible cords um, to actually mount this together. USB cables can be kind of a pain, so that's why this box is a little larger. I then plugged in the hard drives into the hub, and then you can see here I've got some cable management going on. These are just cheap tabs. You can buy bags of 50 at you know Lowe's or whatnot, and that just keeps the cords from getting tugged. Um, I wanted to make sure that if I pulled the box away from the desk and it you know caught a little bit it wouldn't rip any components out before we go any further let's talk about how i powered and wired the actual power in this hub so here's a really really simple diagram we have the 12 volt cable that came with the hub that enters the rear of the box and it goes straight to the switch from the switch it goes up and around to the hub 
and then I uh, tapped into that for the fan. And remember, if you're going to use this 12 volt system, you need your fan to be 12 volts. If it's five volts, you're gonna have to figure out what kind of resistor you're gonna need to use to take that 12 volt and uh, convert it to five volt for the fan. So the idea is power comes in and when the switch is turned on, the fan and the hub turn on. When the hub's on, obviously it's gonna power up the drives and you'll be able to use all of the SD ports. Next, I worked on finishing up the panels and everything that needed to be done to put this whole thing together. So here is the back plate, and uh, you can see I've glued in that kind of cable management, and all that's leaving the box is the USB cable that connects to the computer and the power cable. The next thing I did was put everything together. So here's kind of a top looking down into the box. You can see all the walls are up. Then all I had to do was add the top, and that's it. The box was complete, powered it up, and it worked awesome. The next thing to do was to plug it in and set up the RAID 0 for those two hard drives. So instead of RAID 1, which means the data is copied to both hard drives simultaneously, RAID 0 takes that same file and just copies it to both drives and kind of splits it. So you're essentially getting two hard drives, both of their speeds combined. So you get double the speed. The weakness with RAID 0 is that if one hard drive fails, you lose all of your data. So you have to have a backup solution. The way I back up my RAID 0 is that I have two drives in a separate enclosure that are dedicated to backing up. One backs up the RAID 0 every hour and the other backs up daily. To do this, I use Carbon Copy Cloner. It's a great piece of Mac software. Now I wanna talk about things I would have done differently if I were to rebuild this today. First, I would have used different card readers and I would have installed them differently. After I was using this, I left my cards in for a good while one day and came back and they were wicked hot. And uh, I did some research. It turns out on the reviews on Amazon, this card reader really does overheat. What I would recommend is if you use these card readers, space them farther apart and maybe you use something like this. This is another brand that looks uh, like it's much cooler. And finally, the thing I would have done differently or I would do for the Mark II is use hardwood. Poplar, pine, all those things. First of all, they stain horribly. So I should have left this raw and just put you know, a poly over it or something. It would have looked a little better. It's also a softwood, so it's easier to scratch and it's harder to work with. Uh, hardwood is something I do in the next version. So there you have it. That is the Editing Hub or EH Mark One. Looking forward to seeing what I can come up with when it comes to other stuff like this. I'd love to see what you guys make or have made. Please send me videos and photos either on Twitter or here at YouTube. And uh, I just can't get enough of this stuff. Make sure you check the description for links to all the parts that I use and other resources that I mentioned throughout this video. And let me know if you like this kind of video and you wanna see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can watch new videos here at DSLR Video Shooter every single Tuesday and Thursday. I will see you guys in the next video.